Entering a new record works pretty much the same in both patents and trademarks, so we're going to start with a trademark and then toggle back and forth. To enter a new trademark, go to the Trademarks list, select this option if it's not already selected, and then click the New Trademark button to create the record. Type the name of the trademark and then select the company that owns it. The company information appears and since we assigned a contact at the company to a default position, the contact is already added to the record. These fields are for display only, so if you want to update the company information, you can click this hyperlink to open the company record. Since companies often register the same trademark name in several jurisdictions, we've included a nice little shortcut here. If you've already selected a company and then you double-click this field, a list of the company's trademarks will appear and you can just select the trademark name from the list. To assign a file and matter number, you can select it from the drop-down list. If the number you need isn't already in the list, you can edit the company's file and matter numbers by clicking this hyperlink. For text fields, just type in the appropriate text. And for these other fields, you can make selections in the drop-down lists. If a drop-down list doesn't include the value you're looking for, then you can edit the table that populates the list by clicking the hyperlink. So if you want to look at the list of jurisdictions, you would click here. As you can see, you can tell the system that a jurisdiction applies to trademarks or patents or both. For example, there's no such thing as an Alabama patent, so for that jurisdiction we'd leave this blank. In patents, you can enter both a national application and an international application number. To add classes to a trademark, just select them from the drop-down list. And if you need to add or edit the classes, you can click this link to open this form and make whatever changes you need. In patents, it works pretty much the same way, except the classes are listed on the More Information page. Depending on how you've set up the date template for this particular jurisdiction, you might start getting dates showing up here after you've entered the jurisdiction, the filing basis, or the status of the trademark. When we cover date templates later, you'll see why that happens. In patents, the dates that appear depend on the jurisdiction, the patent type, and the status. On the More Information page, you can type whatever text you need here. And if there are documents you want to link to this patent, you can do that down here. So for example, if we wanted to set a link to the full abstract for this record, we could type a descriptive name here, and then set the link to the document by clicking this hyperlink. Just navigate to where the document is stored, select the file, and click this button. Once the link is set, you can open the document by just clicking the link. If the abstract for a patent is several pages long, that's exactly what we suggest you do. Link the abstract as a document instead of pasting the text in here, because pasting thousands of characters into a database record can slow down the database performance time. The document links, by the way, don't have to be Word documents. You can set a link to a PDF or a spreadsheet or any other type of file. You can also choose to set a link to a folder. If you check this box before setting the link, you're telling the system to navigate to a folder instead of a file. So we'll give this link a descriptive name, click the same hyperlink to start navigating, and then select our folder. Now if we click the hyperlink here, the system will open the entire folder. If other companies have decided to license the patent, you can enter that information here by selecting the company from the drop-down list.
To link a graphic to a trademark or patent, just click this hyperlink, navigate to the file, and then click this button. If the graphic you've selected is too big to fit inside the graphic window, you can click this option to resize the display. And once you've set a graphic here, it will also show up on the trademark record if you open it as a report. To add any actions you've taken on a trademark, you can type the date, or you can select it from the drop-down calendar, and type the action here. This works exactly the same in both patents and trademarks. If you check this box, you're telling the system you want this action to show up in your list of alert dates. We'll come back to the alert dates when we show how to set up alerts. If you check this box, you're telling the system that this action was completed, which is important to know if you did in fact select this action as an alert. If you want to add contacts to a record who weren't added automatically, then come down here and open the drop-down list. And you can sort this list by contact name or company name, whichever makes it easier to find who you're looking for. And after you've selected the contact, you can select the position here. Then once you leave the contact record, the rest of the information will fill in automatically so you don't have to retype it.